1977, NASA sent the Voyager spacecraft to explore the outer parts of the solar system and the space beyond. And at one point, the probes ran into something totally nightmarish – a blazing wall of fire measuring temperatures from 54,000 to 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, did the probes manage to survive these intense conditions? <laughs> we'll find out soon. Meanwhile, there are several ways to think about where the solar system ends. One way is to say it ends where the planets stop. Another way is connected to the Oort cloud. That's a giant group of icy objects far beyond the planets, the farthest region of the solar system. It is extremely distant maybe a quarter to halfway to the nearest star. To understand such huge distances, scientists often use something called the astronomical unit, or AU. One AU is the distance between Earth and the Sun. For comparison, Pluto orbits between about 30 to 50 AU from the Sun. The inner edge of the Oort cloud is thought to be much, much farther away. And the outer edge could be even further away. These distances are very hard to imagine. My little brain sputters when considering such. Now, we can also measure them in time instead of miles. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft makes almost 1 million miles per day. At that speed, it would take about 300 years to reach the Oort cloud and maybe 30,000 years to reach its outer edge. Now, one more way to define the edge of the solar system is by the sun's gravity. It might be the area where the Sun can still pull objects back toward it. And finally, we can define it by considering the heliopause, the boundary where the Sun's influence ends. You see, the Sun constantly sends out charged particles in a flow called the solar wind. This wind moves past all the planets and reaches about three times the distance to Pluto. The solar wind creates a giant bubble around the Sun and planets called the heliosphere. The heliopause is the outer edge of this bubble, where the solar wind meets the wind coming from other stars, called the interstellar wind. Here, the pressures from the solar wind and the interstellar wind balance each other. This causes the solar wind to turn back and flow along the tail of the heliosphere. As the heliosphere moves through space, it creates a bow shock, similar to the wave that forms in front of a ship moving through the water. So, depending on how you define it – by planets, by the Oort cloud, by gravity, or by the Sun's magnetic influence – the edge of the solar system can mean very different distances. But if we talk about the Voyagers, they came across something intense. It was something we could probably call a wall of fire. Blazing heat and intense temperatures. The two probes became the first spacecraft to travel beyond the heliosphere and cross the heliopause. Before the Voyager spacecraft reached the heliopause, scientists did not know exactly where this boundary would be. But the fact that the two spacecraft crossed it at different distances helped confirm some predictions about the heliopause. Scientists did expect that the edge of the heliosphere could move as the Sun's activity changes, a bit like a lung expanding and contracting as we breathe. And the fact that Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 encountered the heliopause at different distances match this expectation. The heliopause is not a hard edge or solid wall, but the nickname Wall of Fire actually matches the nature of that insane region. Both spacecraft measured extremely high temperatures there – around 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin, or 54,000 to 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite these extreme temperatures, the spacecraft were safe. The particles in this region are very far apart, so collisions are rare and not enough heat could reach the spacecraft to harm them. Nearly 50 years after their launch, Voyagers 1 and 2 continued to send back data from beyond the heliopause. They are the only two spacecraft that have crossed this boundary so far. Together, they have already made several curious discoveries about space outside the solar system. For example, Voyager 2's magnetic field measurements confirmed a surprising result from Voyager 1. Just beyond the heliopause, the magnetic field lines are aligned with the magnetic field inside the heliosphere. Before Voyager 2, scientists only had one measurement from Voyager 1, so they could not be sure whether this alignment was real or just a coincidence. 
Voyager 2 confirmed that the alignment was real. The magnetic fields inside and just outside the heliopause apparently run in parallel. These discoveries give scientists important information about the structure and behavior of space beyond the solar system. Now, let's dig a little deeper into the Voyager program itself. It's made up of two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and, wait for it, Voyager 2. Even though Voyager 2 was launched first in August 1977, Voyager 1 took off just two weeks later on a faster, more direct path. These two spacecraft have been traveling for more than 40 years, exploring worlds no human will ever walk on, at least in the near future. The two Voyager spacecraft are nearly identical. Each has a large radio dish that is 12 feet across. This dish sends data back to Earth. They also have 16 thrusters to control their direction and make sure the dishes always point toward our planet. The thrusters use special hydrazine fuel, and the spacecraft's electronics are powered by thermoelectric generators that run on plutonium. Each Voyager carries 11 scientific instruments. About half of them were made specifically to study planets, and most of those are now turned off. The turned off instruments include several cameras, spectrometers, and two radio based experiments. During their long journeys through the solar system, the Voyagers took tens of thousands of images and measurements. This data has changed what we know about the outer planets. When the Voyagers reached Jupiter, they gave us our first detailed look at the planet's atmosphere. They showed that the Great Red Spot was a huge storm spinning counterclockwise and interacting with smaller storms nearby. The Voyagers also discovered a faint dusty ring around Jupiter. They studied Jupiter's moons, too. They found volcanoes on Io, saw linear features on Europa that hinted at a hidden ocean beneath its icy surface, and confirmed that Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, larger even than Saturn's moon Titan. Next, the spacecraft flew past Saturn. They measured the planet's atmosphere and studied its famous rings, discovering gaps and waves we still see today. Voyager 1 looked through Titan's thick haze and suggested that the Moon might have liquid hydrocarbons on its surface. It was later confirmed by other missions. Voyager 1 also found three new moons orbiting Saturn – Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. So that's where she ended up. <laughs> After Saturn, Voyager 1 continued out of the solar system, while Voyager 2 headed toward Uranus. Voyager 2 discovered 11 new moons and two new rings there. It also observed strange features, such as Uranus's unusual magnetic field and a surprisingly small temperature difference between its equators and poles. Voyager 2's final planetary stop was Neptune. It happened 12 years after leaving Earth. There, it discovered six small moons and rings around the planet. It studied Neptune's atmosphere and magnetic field and observed volcanic vents on Triton, Neptune's largest moon. After this, Voyager 2 joined Voyager 1 on its journey toward interstellar space. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space in August 2012, and Voyager 2 joined it in November 2018. These missions helped scientists measure the edge of our solar system, about 11 billion miles from the Sun. The spacecraft still sends back data about this mysterious region. By the way, after its planetary visits, Voyager 1 took the famous pale blue dot photo of Earth from about 3.7 billion miles away. Today, Voyager 1 is about 15.8 billion miles from Earth, and Voyager 2 is about 13.1 billion miles away. Each Voyager carries a golden record, a time capsule from Earth for other civilizations it might meet. The record covers include instructions for playing it a map showing Earth's location, and a drawing of a hydrogen atom. The records are cleverly plated with uranium, so the decay of the uranium could help discoverers figure out when the record was made. The records contain 115 images showing Earth, humans, animals, plants, and our solar system. They include natural sounds like waves and birdsong, greetings in 55 languages, brainwave recordings, and a mix of music ranging from Beethoven to Chuck Berry and folk songs.
That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.